Hey everybody, if you're like me, then you constantly worry about buildings catching on fire when someone plays your newest mixtape. And since you can't compromise your artistic integrity because of a few exploding sound systems, you have to be prepared for the blazes that inevitably ensue once the beat drops. A fire extinguisher is one of your best options, but what are these things anyway? How do they work? Great question. <laughs> the subject of this episode. First, let's talk about fire. Fire is the result of a chemical combustion reaction, typically between oxygen and some sort of fuel like wood or gasoline. For the reaction to occur, the fuel has to reach its ignition temperature. For wood, that's about 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius. The heat decomposes some of the wood's cellulose, and that decomposed stuff is released as volatile gases like a compound of hydrogen, carbon, and and oxygen. When the gas is hot enough, its molecules break apart. The atoms recombine with the oxygen to form water, carbon dioxide, and other products. This heat keeps the fuel at the ignition temperature, so it keeps burning as long as there is fuel and oxygen. There you have it, fire, the result of extreme heat, oxygen, and fuel. Fire extinguishers remove at least one of those elements from the equation. Imagine a fire extinguisher cut in half. So that plastic siphon tube there leads from the bottom of the fire suppressant reservoir to the top of the extinguisher. A spring-mounted valve blocks the passageway from the siphon to the nozzle. At the top of the cylinder, there's a smaller cylinder filled with a compressed gas, uh, liquid carbon dioxide, for example. A release valve keeps the compressed gas from escaping. When you pull out the safety pin and depress the operating lever, it pushes on an actuating rod. The rod presses the spring-mounted valve down to open up the passage to the nozzle. The bottom of this actuating rod has a sharp point which pierces the gas cylinder release valve. The compressed gas escapes, applying downward pressure on the fire suppressant material, and this drives that fire suppressant stuff up the siphon, out the nozzle. The proper way to use the extinguisher is to aim it directly at the fuel not at the flames, and spray in a sweeping motion. There are three main types of extinguisher. A water extinguisher can put out things like burning wood or paper or cardboard, but it's no great shakes at electrical fires or fires involving inflammable liquids. In an electrical fire, water might actually conduct the current, which could electrocute you. Then there's the carbon dioxide extinguisher. The CO2 is kept in a pressurized liquid form. When the container is open, the CO2 forms a gas. This gas is heavier than oxygen, so it displaces the oxygen surrounding the fuel. This type of extinguisher is the one you'll find most often in restaurants because it won't contaminate cooking equipment or food. However, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please. The most popular fire extinguishing material, uh, that's the dry chemical extinguisher. These cylinders contain foam or powder, typically made of sodium bicarbonate. You may know it by its street name, baking soda. Baking soda starts to decompose uh, at only about 158 degrees Fahrenheit, which for everybody but the US is 70 degrees Celsius. And when this stuff decomposes, it releases CO2. The CO2, along with the insulation of the foam, smothers fire. However, be careful. Most fire extinguishers contain a small amount of suppressant. You can use it up in seconds, and that's why they're only effective on relatively small fires. To put out a bigger blaze, you need more equipment, like a, a fire engine, as well as, hopefully, some trained professionals. But for the conflagrations that can pop up in your house, a fire extinguisher is a lifesaver. That's it. I mean, remember, again, if you have to use one, hit the fuel, not the flame, and sweep across the fire. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, toss me a like if you dug this video. Uh, let me know which other gadgets I should cover in the future, and stay tuned next week for more brain stuff.